Okay, any voice? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Diane Shirley, and my sister uh, lives in Georgia, and my niece told me she was missing. Her name is Deborah Collier, or she could go by Debbie. Okay. And, and I'm wondering if y'all have any information about it. <clears throat> as far as, I mean, no, no, not other than with the officer or whoever is working on the case, I, I don't know anything. Um, where was she, where did she live? Do you know? Um, all I know is Athens. I'm sorry, I don't know her, her address. Collier. Okay. C O S I E R. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have any information. Um, you know, when there's something, they will they will contact the family. Um, whenever they, like I said, whenever they have something for that. Okay. All right. We're just not getting information, so I'm, I'm just. Yeah, I'm sorry just, about I'm that. Just, I am really worried about my sister. Okay. And. You know, she. I, I, you have any information where she might go, or you have anything to add? Well, to it, my, or? from from my niece, she said that <clears> she was in an accident about a month ago, and she was, you know, on the road. She was following this truck, and this truck lost a paint can. And the paint can hit my sister's car, and the paint went everywhere. And the driver was trying to convince my sister not to tell the cops that he was driving because he was out on parole, and there was, you know, a stipulation to his parole that he couldn't drive. I I'm sorry. I was going to ask, do you think that was told to anybody else? Well, uh, do you think that was told to the I, officer, that, that concern? That standing from my niece. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know if the officer knows that, but I can have him call you um, if you want to pass it along with really, him, anything to help, you know? Yes, I would really appreciate that. Yeah, that's no problem. Because I'm in Alabama. I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I'm in Alabama, and, you know, I, I, I'm really too, she won't, you know, she's not communicating very well with us, and I really would like to know what's going on. I got you. Yeah, since you, I mean, since you may have insight on that, let me, I'll have the sergeant give you a call. Is that okay? Yes, sir. That would be wonderful. All right. And what is, let's see here. <clears throat> Excuse me one more time. What's your name? My name is Diane Shirley. And your phone number? And this is your sister, right? Yes. <clears throat> her daughter's name is Amanda Bearden. She would have been the one that would, her and her husband Steve Collier, would have been the ones filing the report, was my understanding from Amanda. Okay. Yeah, I'll just have them give you a call, okay? And just the same title, all right? All right. Thank you all so right. much. No problem. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. After speaking with Amanda that her sister Debbie Collier is missing, she calls 911 to find out more information the police may have in regards to this. And we learn Diane it was aware of Debbie getting into a car accident and that the driver's paint can came off and made a big mess. I'm assuming paint went all over the car, along with a deal, or as she put it, stipulation, to his parole that he could not drive and not to call the police. The first thought I had in this is that we learned that Debbie will do something to protect someone who is driving illegally by being on parole. And I'm not sure if he told her he would pay her for the damages. Sometimes in accidents, people will do this to avoid their insurance going up, which I have done in the past. But it shows that she will have the intent to help somebody who could get into trouble with the law, a character trait that can be deceptive.
and I have to wonder what else would she do to cover up things that may be not good if she would do this with a st- But she did tell her daughter the truth, but does that make it all right? Her a beta person saving someone else to potentially burden their life. I will let you decide on that, and if you can let me know, what do you think of how she handled this? Was it right or wrong to help an offender out? In speaking with her niece, Amanda, she informs the police officer that she is not communicating very well, which leads me to think did not get very much information from her about much of what would be important to tell a family member, like the last time she saw her mom, plans she had that day, but makes mention about the accident she had and detailed information and that Amanda was the one who filed the report. For her, and first would be a scary call to get, but with little information, this must have been frustrating or annoying, as this is how I would feel. But why did she not call Steve her husband prior to calling the police? Then she could not recall her address, leads me to also think that maybe she was not close to Debbie and Steve to call them, or to see her sister Debbie, as she, from what I know, lived there at the same house a long time. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this phone call, and you can listen to the other two phone calls that Steve did make and also Amanda did make to 911 on my playlist. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Peace, love, and light. Be safe.